Good evening. We're here in the Space Shuttle Flight Control Room, where the Orbit 3 team is on duty over in the Space Station Flight Control Room. They've just completed a handover, and we have this opportunity to speak with the flight controllers uh, who's uh, just wrapped up the handover. This is Pooja Joshi, who is the ADCO. Why don't you start by telling us a little bit about that position? Okay, sure. Um, the ADCO is the Attitude Determination Control Officer of the ISS. Uh, basically, we're, we're the pilots of the ISS. Uh, we make sure that the ISS flies around the Earth um, in a specific orientation, and any sort of maneuvers we need to do or reboots, um, we help coordinate those. Tell us about your path to becoming uh, an ADCO in this position. Where did you grow up in your college? Sure. Um, I actually was born and raised in England, and I moved um, to the U.S. when I was around 10. Um, and since I was 10, I basically talked about wanting to work for NASA. I'm basically like every other person at NASA that says, I've always wanted to be an astronaut, you know, since I was little. Um, a lot of my friends from when I was younger still comment about how I used to talk about it when I was a kid, and now I actually work here, so it's kind of funny. Um, so, you know, when I was a kid, I always wanted to work for NASA, and so the natural path for me was to become an aerospace engineer in college. So I attended the University of Texas and got an undergraduate degree at, in aerospace engineering, and then I actually was given the opportunity to co-op at NASA. So I was one of the few that got to co-op here, and then ended up coming on full-time once I graduated college. What kind of areas did you co-op in? I know a lot of people, you know, rotate different areas within the uh, Space Center. That's correct. Um, I was able to do a co-op rotation in the, the TPS system, the tile protection system, so I learned a lot about shuttle tiles on my first co-op tour. And then my second co-op tour, I worked um, in the ECLIS group, um, which is another International Space Station flight control discipline that works on the life support system of the ISS. Um, and from there, I knew that I wanted to do flight control, and now I just have to decide where I actually wanted to go. Um, and ADCO seemed like the great fit for me because that's exactly what I studied in undergrad, uh, aerospace engineering, so. What do you like most about your position as ADCO? Um, my favorite part about being an ADCO is actually being able to work with our Russian counterparts. Um, we work pretty closely with them on a regular basis because the way that the ISS actually orbits the Earth is that we have propulsive and non-propulsive attitude control. So the propulsive attitude control is provided by the Russian segment, and the U.S. segment provides non-propulsive attitude control because um, we are not able to keep an unlimited supply of propellant on the ISS, obviously, because it's very costly. Um, so any sort of actual reboost or, or huge station maneuvers are provided by the Russian segment. So um, we work with them pretty closely, and I actually got to go to Moscow um, quite recently and, and work there for one of the missions. So working with the Russians, I think, is my favorite part. You bring up a really good point, which is that international aspect to all of this, and you know, especially the partnership, of course, with Russia. Um, how does that interaction happen? Do you have individual counterparts, or is it through the flight director? Like, ex explain to us how that. Sure, um, we do have specific counterparts. Um, the U.S. I mean, the Russian counterparts to our specific system is are called Sudan, um, and they are almost the equivalent of what we do here. So they're the motion control specialists um, of the Russian Space Agency. Um, and we, sp we speak to them on specific loops um, every day, and we have teleconferences with them, um, and we communicate almost on a daily basis. And every actual shuttle mission, uh, we send representatives to Moscow um, to make sure that the coordination goes smoothly. Do you speak Russian? No. Um, well, I took a lot of the preliminary classes here that are offered at JSC, um, and it's actually a great thing that they do offer those classes here. So when I got to go, I actually knew some of the basics. I wasn't completely lost, um, but I don't know it as well as a lot of my other colleagues do. So when you were describing your position, you explained that you were like the pilots of the space station. Tell us exactly how our system works. I know it's control moment drivers, but can you tell us a little bit about that? Sure. Um, so the U.S. system, like I said, is non-propulsive attitude control. So we use CMGs, which are control moment gyros, and they're, they're these big spinning disks. We have four of them. And um, by using the disks and the momentum that it creates, we're able to control the way that the ISS is oriented. Um, but there's only a limited capability that these gyros can provide. So if we need a bigger maneuver or a reboost, for example, these gyros cannot do that. They can only do steady state. Um, kind of control. So whenever we need to do something bigger, that's when we ask the Russians to help us out. So you've talked to us a little bit about what you like the most about your position. Can you tell us what is what you find to be the hardest part? 
I guess the hardest part of this job is that it's, it's actually pretty stressful. Um, when you think about what you're actually doing, sitting in MCC, controlling the International Space Station that's flying you know, around the Earth, and the, the crew that's in there, and the lives that we actually have to protect and make sure that everything goes smoothly on a daily basis, I think that would be the hardest part. But to me, that's also the funnest part of this job. You know, being able to do all of those things are also really fun. So not only is it stressful, but it's fun as well. So. So what advice would you have for people, um, you know, maybe students or young young people who are watching who would be interested in this type of career? Um, I think it's mainly um, the people that are interested in this kind of career are the people like me who have been interested in it since they were six years old. Um, and even people that are in college that recently just learned about the space program. Um, I think, like most people would say, you know, be do well in your math and science classes and, and be proactive because, um, if you want to work at NASA, there is an opportunity out there for you, you know, and, and the NASA space program is not only here at JSC, it's, it's across the U.S., so there's multiple opportunities for a student that would want to participate. And since you did the co-op experience, which I think is, you know, a great way for people to kind of feel out different areas within NASA, um, are there particular skills or traits that you think, you know, made you good for ADCO? You know, what would some of those things be? I think in general, um, to be a flight controller at NASA, you have to have that sort of type A personality, um, people that are that are um, particular to detail um, and don't get overwhelmed with handling multiple tasks at the same time, um, are confident in what they're saying. Um, those are usually the type of people that fit well in the flight control world. Um, but that's specific to only flight control. I mean, there's obviously a m multitude of actual positions at NASA that you could do, engineering or analysis background. Uh, but to be a flight controller, it takes definitely a specific type of personality. And when you're in that room, you'll see that everybody in that room has the same personality type that you do. Speaking of, how long have you been in this position? I've been in the ADCO group for over two years now, but I actually just recently got certified to be a uh, front room at go flight controller. Okay, so it takes that long to, from the entry level position to work up to being certified? That's correct. It took me, and, and about average, it's usually around two years for the actual ADCO position, but there's some positions like EVA um, and a lot of the asset entry in the shuttle rooms that take, you know, nine years or six years. So it just depends. It's, it's discipline specific. Great. Well, thank you so much for sharing your story with us. We really appreciate it. Again, this was Pooja Joshi, who is the ADCO over in the Space Station Flight Control Room. Uh, she's just wrapped up her shift, so we'll let you go home. But thank you again for your time. Thank you so much. I appreciate it.